Four games were released on the Nintendo Entertainment System starring Donkey Kong and or Donkey Kong Jr. in 1986 as part of Nintendo's Black Box series, three of which being ports of previously released arcade games. Let's get into them. Donkey Kong is usually credited as the first ever platform game, a rare example of getting it right on the first try. You play as Mario, who was known as Jumpman at the time of the original arcade release, set to rescue the damsel in distress Pauline, who is being held captive by the mad ape the game is named after. It's pretty crazy to think that Donkey Kong was a fully established and named character before Mario. Also wild to think that Mario was originally a carpenter, not a plumber. Note the construction site setting. As far as I know, there's no game that details the backstory behind Mario's sudden career change. Each stage in Donkey Kong poses a unique challenge. In the iconic first stage, you scale fallen girders while jumping over or hammering barrels for points, which is useful because 20,000 grants an extra life. The second stage adds much smaller platforms, conveyor belts, and a springy thing to avoid, which always follows the same exact path, unlike the more predictable barrels. And finally, Mario, or Jumpman, has to remove the bolts from these girders to send Donkey Kong tumbling down, while either avoiding or hammering the flaming things out to get you. The final two stages also include items, Pauline's umbrella and handbag, which can optionally be retrieved for points. This is a very strict and unforgiving platformer. Your timing and placement need to be on point with very little room for error, and the fall damage is just brutal. You're telling me that a fall from this height is enough to kill me? Look at that! This game can be frustrating, but it's also incredibly fun, and because of the high difficulty, improving at it feels very rewarding. There's definitely some stiffness to the controls, but it's not bad at all once you put in a little practice and get used to it. The only sucky thing is, I swear that every now and then the jump button fails to register. Like most arcade-style games, it loops back to the beginning each time you finish it, and becomes more difficult with each go-around. I have yet to beat the game more than twice in a row, so I'm not great at it. Once DK starts slinging barrels diagonally, it's curtains for me. This version is unfortunately missing one of the stages from the arcade original, but that doesn't stop it from being a great port of a classic game. I actually prefer playing this version over the original arcade cabinet, because on a 2D platformer, the NES D-pad is far more comfortable to me than an arcade stick. Instead of copying the same formula for the sequel, Nintendo flipped the script, allowing you to play as the new title character, Donkey Kong Jr., on a mission to rescue your captive dad from Mario. Wait, Mario's the bad guy? Oh, how the turntables. They also introduced new game mechanics, which drove forward the genre they arguably created. In this one, you're capable of climbing on vines and chains instead of only running and jumping. There are many ways to score points, more than in the original, the most fun of which is knocking fruit off of its vines and onto enemies. There are also a greater variety of goals and environments in this one. My favorite stages are the third, where you have to jump over electrical charges on your way to the top, and the fourth, which involves pushing keys up chains to free DK, while avoiding climbing and flying enemies. Scoring bonus points busting their skulls is so satisfying. Much like in the original, the more quickly you can get through levels, the more bonus points you will be awarded, which adds a fun risk-reward dynamic, because once again, 20,000 points will earn you a 1-up. I love this game. The only thing I don't love is the second stage. I don't necessarily think it's bad, I just really, really suck at it, specifically the very beginning. Something about the controls really throw me for a loop on this particular part, and I struggle getting anywhere at all. You'd think I'd never touched a video game before. It's not really a knock against the game, because I think it's just me. I always get annoyed, though, because I just want to make it to the third and fourth stages, since I have a lot more fun with those. 
A couple of years later, in 1988, both of these great games were bundled together on the compilation Donkey Kong Classics. This is the version I recommend because it's cheaper, easier to find, and takes up less space on your shelf. The only bummer is that the missing stage of the first game remains missing, as they are exact copies of the original ports. Next up is Donkey Kong 3. And it's certainly a game. Nintendo made a drastic change for this one, abandoning platforming almost entirely in favor of shooting. You play as Stanley the Exterminator. Who is he? He's the guy from Donkey Kong 3. You're armed with bug spray, which you use to take out bugs who are trying to make off with your plants, while simultaneously needing to blast Donkey Kong in the ass with the bug spray, yes, you heard that correctly, to prevent him from reaching the ground level and forcing him to climb up and out of sight. I really, really tried to get into this game and have some fun with it, but almost as soon as I began playing it, I wanted to turn it off. It's not bad exactly, I do feel like some people would enjoy it, I just can't get into it at all. It's such a bizarre concept for a game, and as far as I can tell, it only has two stages that repeat again and again. I don't know for certain because I didn't spend a lot of time playing this. The first two on NES had three stages and four stages respectively, so after taking a step forward, we seem to be going two steps backward now. If you do give it a try, don't go into it thinking of it as a Donkey Kong game, because it really doesn't play anything like one. It ended up being a massive financial disappointment for Nintendo. Its arcade machine didn't move nearly as many units as its predecessors. I'm frankly surprised it received an NES port at all. Oh boy, we are really scraping the bottom of the barrel now with Donkey Kong Jr. Math. This was the first game in the series, if you want to count it as part of the series, to not be an arcade game. It was made specifically for the NES. In this game, you once again play as Donkey Kong Jr., jumping and climbing on vines to attain the correct numbers and arithmetic symbols to create an equation that equals the value held up by Donkey Kong. Who is this character over here? He reminds me of Chunky Kong from DK64. He looks as bored as I am. Now, anyone who has ever played The Oregon Trail or Typing of the Dead knows that educational games are not required to suck. But this one definitely does. It controls fine, it's easy to move DK Jr. around and stuff, but that really isn't relevant. No amount of polish is going to make up for a concept as weak and uninspired as this. The failures of Donkey Kong 3 and this absolute snore caused Nintendo's first established character to fade into obscurity for the next decade or so, before he would make a roaring comeback in 1994. But that's a tale for a different day. If you enjoyed this video, hopefully more than I enjoyed playing Donkey Kong Jr. Math, please consider subscribing, leaving a thumbs up, sharing, and ringing the bell so you don't miss any future videos. This has been a Leaky Faucet Review, Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.